Welcome back. Now we're today we're going to cover section 10.1, which is curves defined by a parametric equation. So these curves are a little different than what we've been working with. Uh, you can actually see these on your calculator. We can graph some of these. So hold on for a second. I'm going to load up my calculator. Okay, I guess I had this running the whole time. So you saw me load up my calculator. Here we go. So uh, section 10.1 curves. So we're going to look at this. Today. I have a function x and y are given as functions of a third variable. X equals f of t, y is equal to g of t. This is called a param uh, parametric or a parameter. These are parametric equations. What's interesting about them is they actually allow us to do things that we can't normally do in a function. I can look at direction. I can see how things are flowing. And it also allows to express functions that aren't always easily expressed as a single function. So here's an example. It says x is equal to t squared minus 2t and y is equal to t plus 1. So t is the time, and usually it's time. In this instance, obviously it can't be time. because can't have negative. So it says, if I let t equal negative 2, then I get the ordered pair 8, negative 1. If I let t equal negative 1, put negative 1 in here, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 2 times a negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. That's where the x comes from, 3. I put that in here, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So what we're doing is taking this t value in here and substituting it in these spots. And that will give us the x values. So that will give us the y values. And since we have ordered pairs, we can graph these. So we just happen to have a graph here handy. I'm going to look at the first one, 8, negative 1. 8, negative 1 is right here. And that's t sub 1. T sub negative 2, sorry. I'm just changing the thickness here. This is t sub negative 2. I'm going to write the wrong number no matter how many times I say this. t sub negative 2. And then the next one is 3, 0. So I find 3, 0. That's t sub negative 1. The next ordered pair is 0, comma 1. t sub 0. The next one is negative 1, 2. So negative 1, 2. That's t sub 1. The next point is 0, 3. So technically, this isn't a function because it would fail the uh, vertical line test. t sub 2. 3, 4. t sub 3. And then t4, 8, 5. So this thing flows, we could draw, we could connect our, our points, and it stops here. And then we can show the flow by showing arrows. So see, it allows us to create a function, even though it would fail when we look at it on the xy terms, it would fail as a uh, vertical line test. But this is actually still a function. It's a parameter. All right, so this is how we're going to do it. Now, typically when we're doing these, we're going to talk t is time. So if I give you a problem and I, I say something started at this moment and happened for the next five seconds, the first thing you should show me is t sub zero because we see where it started up through the next five seconds. And I don't want to see anything that happened before t sub zero, nor would I care what happened after t sub five because I'm only looking at from zero to five. Just some things to note while we're talking about these problems. So first of all, we're going to say we need to look at ways to eliminate t and get one equation. So we want to rewrite these functions. 
So we can solve for t in one equation and plug into the other. That's just by substitution. And then we can use some trig IDs to help us. So these trig identities, these Pyth the Pythagorean identities will help us sometimes to solve these problems. So what curve is represented by the parametric equation x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, where zero is between t and zero is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to pi? Well, what do we know? We know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Well, or in this case, cosine t, sine t. So that means wherever I see cosine, I can put x, x squared. Wherever I see sine t, I can put y squared is equal to 1, or x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. It's a circle. R is equal to 1. So let's pull up our calculator. Change the mode. So we want to go to mode. I want to be in a parametric, so I'm going to come down here. Scroll over to parametric. Hit enter. Now I'm in parametric mode. I can quit this. I go to y equals. And now in here it has an x sub 1 and a y sub 1. Clear. I'm going to clear these. So x, right, x in here was cosine t. So I'm going to write, I'm going to go cosine, and there's t. And y, it's sine t. So we now have our x and our y, right? x is cosine t, y is sine t. And I'm going to look at my window. And for my window, I'm going to go from a t of 0 to, it said, a t of 2 pi. See right there, 2 pi. So 2 pi. I'm going to let it step like that. And I'm going to have it's, the radius is r. r is equal to 1. So I think going from 1.5 is enough to minus 1.5. Just so we can see the entire thing. One point. Oh, wow. I help if I put the minimums correctly. My minimum is negative one point five. My maximum is one point five. So I want to delete that. Negative one point five is my y minimum, and my y maximum is a positive one point five. Now I want you to pay attention to watch this thing as it graphs. Look where it starts and look where it ends. So it's a circle. It doesn't look very much like a circle. So let's uh, zoom square five because it's not very square. Now you can see it as a square. So here, it looks a lot more like a circle now. So if we look at this function, it started here. That's t sub zero. And it went this direction. And it ended there t at t pi at, at t two pi. So it's a circle, and it rotated counterclockwise. So this one, if x equals sine t, y is equal to cosine t. That's different. For x was cosine, x is sine. At y was sine, y is cosine. So it's different. So let's work this problem out again. And we're going to do the same thing we just did before. We know that sine t squared plus cosine squared t is equal to 1. So we get x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. It's a circle again. Big deal. Circle r is equal to 1. Wow. Right? That's what you're probably thinking. Wow, that is so impressive. We got the same answer. Now I'm going to go from 0 to 4 pi. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens. Let's go in here. Let's go to y equals. We're going to switch these, right? Because x was sine, not cosine. And y was cosine, not sine. So let's change them. And graph. Now, pay attention to this. Ah, did you see that? So let's go y equals. Let's come up here and change how we're graphing this. 
we're going to click trace on there, enter graph. <laughs> See that? This time we only went to 2 pi. I know it said to go to 4 pi. It was just going to draw it on top of itself. But this time, t sub 0 was here. And it went in this direction. So even though, and then ended at t of 2 pi, because we didn't go all the way around. But this allows us to have flow. It gives us direction. So even though this slide and the previous slide both had an equation of a circle with a radius of r, the flow of this thing is in two different directions because my x was in sine in one and my x was cosine in the other. So that's some of the importance of these problems is having a way to show direction and flow. So now let's look at this problem. I, I want to eliminate the parameter to find a Cartesian equation of the curve. Sketch the curve. We're not going to sketch. Well, well, we'll, we'll show you on a calculator. Sketch the curve and indicate with an arrow the direction in which the curve is traced as the parameter. So, excuse me. So, we want to, the only thing we know so far is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. So if I rearrange this, I know that cosine theta is equal to x over 4, and sine theta is equal to y over 5. By substituting this, right, I get a cosine is x over 4 squared plus y over 5 squared is equal to 1. Right? And then we could say that that's x squared over 16 plus y squared over 25 is equal to 1. That's an ellipse, right? And it's an ellipse with a major axis this way. So we're only going from negative pi over pi, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So it should go from here to here and flow in this direction. Let's see what this does. So y sub 1, I want to clear that, and that is x sub 1 is 4 cosine theta, 4 cosine, oops, 4 cosine, we're going to put in terms of t, because it's, whether it's t or theta, it's the same thing, 5 sine t but I do care about my window that I'm not going to go from zero to this. I want to go from minus pi divided by two to pi divided by two. Graph. Okay. Zoom out. Give me a second, I got to see what happened here. All right, I'm back. I it was my window was too small. I didn't want to have you sit there watching me draw my window. So here we go, square. We're really shouldn't be square because it looks too square. But if you saw that it's basically what I had drawn here, and it's floating in this direction. Oh, that's a typo. We all know that's 25 and 26. All right. Let's move on to the next problem. So now we say x is equal to 1 plus cosine theta, y is equal to 2 sine theta minus 1. Again, the only thing we know is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So we could probably use that to help us solve this. But to do that, we'd have to get everything in those terms. So instead of x is equal to 1 plus cosine theta, we could say cosine theta is equal to x minus 1. And instead of sine theta, y is equal to 2 sine theta, we could get uh, sine 
theta is equal to y plus 1 all divided by 2 just by doing the manipulation. So now we have a sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Through substitution, if sine squared theta is y plus 1 over 2 squared and cosine is x minus 1 quantity squared, we can clear this up. And I get y plus 1 quantity squared over 4 plus x minus 1 quantity squared over 1 is equal to 1. And again, an ellipse. It's just an ellipse. It's just not centered at 0, 0. It's translated. It's translated because I could tell easily because it's translated because of those two. Alrighty. Now, this is a good problem. So, we've been using sine squared plus cosine squared and the trig ones, but this is just x equals e to the t and y is equal to e to the 2t. So, how can we get this to work? Well, I know that y is equal to e to the 2t, like that. All right? I can rewrite that. If I do that, I should notice that this, whoops, let's rewrite this this way. I meant to write it this way. And now I can do a substitution. Sorry. Let me, let me just erase the whole thing so you can see what I meant to write. So, let's start over. We can rewrite y equal e to the 2t as e to the t squared. And since we can do that, and we know that this here looks just like this part over here, I could substitute, and I'll end up in terms of x. So instead of e to the t, I put an x there, and I'm squaring it, or y is equal to x squared. All right. So that's one way to find my solution. So let's look at another way. I know that x is equal to e to the t. How about if I took the natural log of both sides? All right. If I took the natural log, I'd end up with uh, ln of x is equal to t. We know what y is. Y was equal to y is equal to e to the 2t. Oops. Y is equal to e to the 2t. Here's another version of t, so we can say y is equal to e to the 2 times the natural log of x. All right? Which means that I have y is equal to e to the natural log of x squared. So I can kick that in. And a to the log base a of x is equal to x, so I have y is equal to x squared, which is what I had up here. So, same problem, two different ways worked out. All right. Same problem, two different ways worked out. Now we have x equals the natural log of t and y is equal to t. So, if I can get this, if I can rewrite this one in terms of t, I have a nice substitution. So, I take the natural log. Oh, don't want to take the natural log. That'd be a weird thing to do. I want to rewrite this as an exponential. So, log base a of x equals y means a to the y is equal to x. So, we use that concept there. e to the x is equal to t. Well, now we have a t, right? y is equal to square root of t. Great, because this t can be substituted. So, the whole idea, again, is to go and find a way to get everything's in terms of each other with a substitution. So y is equal to e to the x to the 1 half, or y is equal to e to the x over 2. t is greater than 1. So let's see what this looks like. Give me a second. I'm going to put it in my calculator.
Okay, I guess I didn't hit pause after all. So you saw everything I, do I have done. So let's look at the graph. There it is. So here's that function. And again, it's flowing in this direction and terminating there because that's as far as we went and started here. That's T sub zero. All right, X equals secant T and Y equals tangent T. And well, you know that tangent squared T plus one is equal secant squared of T. So again, we can use these concepts to help us solve these problems. So if I have tangent squared of t plus 1 is equal to secant squared of t, I'm just going to substitute. So instead of a tangent squared, I get a y squared plus 1 is equal to x squared. Or we could say x squared minus y squared is equal to 1. And that's a hyperbola. Because it's negative. So give me a second i'm going to hopefully do this correctly and pause the camera Ready? all right we're back here's the function i put x sub one is secant so it's cosine t to the negative one not second here it's not this one i took the reciprocal that remember cosine here is arc cosine it's the inverse cosine function i'm taking the cosine function i'm putting it over negative put it under one so it's i'm taking the reciprocal by this and then y was tangent so see y whoops y is tangent so let's see what this graph looks like and just pay attention to how it's drawn graph alrighty so so it started here went that way then it picked up this way and it jumped back down over here this is a hyperbola and the, the, the two lines here are just the asymptotes and we'll learn more about that later on in this chapter when we learn all about the conic sections. So let's move on to the next. We want to describe the motion of a particle right, with position x, y as t varies in the given interval. So what do we know? Again, we know that sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals 1. So I can say that cosine of t is equal to x minus 2. And sine of t is equal to y minus 3 by manipulation. Again, through substitution, I end up with y minus 3 squared plus x minus 2 squared is equal to 1. What's that telling us? Well, that's a circle centered at uh, 3 comma 2 r is equal to 1. So let's see what this looks like on our function. And also let's pay attention to the flow. Okay, you can see in my calculator I've already put the x sub 1, which is 2 plus cosine t, and the y sub 1, which is 3 plus sine t, right? x here is 2 plus cosine t, y is equal to 3 plus sine t. I already set up my window. My window, I'm going to go from 0 to 6, and we're going to graph this. And it's a circle. Look at that. It's two, three. That's what we said it was centered at, right? Two, three. It looks like an oval, I know. Uh, it's not very square, so if I want to make it look more like a circle, I'm going to zoom five. And there you go. Yeah, I just realized I wrote the wrong... I wrote my 
I just realized I wrote the numbers backwards. I was looking left to right, two, three. I wrote three, two. I was thinking that was my X and that was my Y, but it's not. I was not paying attention. But look at this, two, three. Isn't that that point? Two comma three. Sorry about that. I do not a graph. I promise you that. All right, we're almost done. One more slide, I believe. So we're going to look at this. And I get x equals cosine t, y is equal cosine t. Hmm. What do I do? x equals cosine squared t, y is equal sine. Oops, not y is equal sine. y is equal to cosine t. Well, what kind of substitution we could do? Well, we know that this is true. So, and that looks like I could rewrite x is equal to cosine t squared. So that gives me x is equal to y squared. All right? And that should be, that should be a parabola on its side. So let's take a second. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me plug it in. Okay, as you can see, okay, as you can see, it's in my calculator now. So x, let's go up here, x is equal to cosine squared. So I put x equals cosine squared t and y is equal to cosine t. My windows, my t's are going to range from 0 to 4. Now, this is a really interesting problem. Please try to pay attention to what's going on. So I'm going to graph this. If you notice, it's bouncing back and forth. It started here, went down here, went back up here, went down here, and it never went beyond this point. So it's a pretty interesting thing. You could mimic how things are flowing because at one point it's flowing in this direction, right? Then it hits the end. It says, oh, I'm not done. Now I gotta go back. This is, oh, I'm not done. I had to go to 4 pi. So now I'm going to go back again. And then so forth and so forth until it's done cycling back and forth. So that is the last section, the last set of notes for this section. That was 10.1. We're finishing that up. That was a short section. The next section will be the cactus with parametric. Uh, so we're going to do cactus with parametric equations. So we're going to go further. Right now we were just introducing uh, parametrics. The next section will actually do calculus on those sections. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in class.